the people at Clip Studio reached out to me asking if I could create an animated artwork for them. I love working in Clip Studio Paint, so getting to collaborate with them and have them be the sponsor of this video is definitely exciting. I want to explore animating water this time around, so let me take you along as I do so. Every project starts on a blank page. Selecting a pencil-like brush and getting some initial lines down to break that empty void is a good starting point. I want my artwork to allow for water to be animated, so a seaside setting seems appropriate. A large stone sitting on a rocky beach where the waves can wash in and out will do good. For extra interest and as a strong compositional focal point, we can add a character sitting on the rock. I want the water to be a separate animated asset on top of the painted background. But before spending the hours painting this underlaying backplate to completion, it's clever to draw a frame with the water in it so we can get an idea of how things might look further down the line. The sketch was drawn using a brush called Real Pencil, but now when applying color, I've moved over to Clip Studio's oil brushes. The brushes you can use in Clip Studio Paint are just fantastic. I love how they behave and you can really create some painterly effects. There is a huge asset library directly linked to Clip Studio that lets you browse and import new creative brushes easily. The way I can mix and blend the colors with these oil brushes is really exciting. They leave a slight canvas texture when applied thin, which I truly enjoy. It's a very well-designed brush that feels incredibly natural and not artificial, even though we are working digital here. Definitely a new favorite brush for me. I jump around the canvas, painting whatever catches my interest. This way I slowly bring the whole image up to completion. I don't need to render everything with the same amount of detail. A lack of details using a more suggestive but still deliberate application of paint can create a sense of depth. We can then focus on details where we want the viewer's eye to land. Painting always takes time. But let's move on to the real time-consuming process. Animation. Again, let's make sure we know what we're aiming for. Here I've roughly painted a frame of what the water could look like. The animation tools in Clip Studio Paint are so well made that even if you're very new to animation, you will quickly be able to pick it up and get on with creating your own moving images. For animation, you first want to create a new animation folder, which will host all your frames. Then you can create new blank frames as you move down the timeline. You can easily shuffle these around and extend them if needed. So there's no wrong way to start. I want to begin by focusing on the general movement of the wave washing in and out. To keep things simple, we can begin using only the blue color of the water to describe the motion. It should quickly flush the beach and then hold for a few frames before retreating at a slower pace. This can then become a looping motion that can play out forever. I can lower the opacity of the blue color, showing some of the background below the surface. I try to imagine the topography of the image below. It's not just a smooth slope. There are a lot of rocks and peaks and valleys in the beach surface that would appear at different times as the water level drops. Now I can move on to the wave and the foam using a new animation folder to define the surface. I really have to pay attention here, making the water match the perspective of the scene. These wave and foam details play a huge part in making the water feel 
three-dimensional. Some tech focuses on accurately calculating and simulating things as close as possible to what we see in the world. What I love about Clip Studio Paint is that it's an open playground for me as a 2D artist to explore my own mind simulations. It has all the tools we need to explore that sort of creativity. If we can imagine it, we can render it. I've now been battling this water animation for a good while. A few tides has come and gone, and with all its challenges, I'm slowly getting there. It's time to put my focus on the character. I like the early sketch I started with, so let's clean that up so we can see what a final frame might look like. I can then start animating him using a new animation folder, and let his movement be a reaction to the water animation below. We don't need as many frames as for the water, only a few transitioning between these two poses. A very powerful feature when animating are Clip Studio's reference frames. Each frame on the timeline can be assigned a specific drawing. By simply right-clicking on the frame, you can select which drawing in the animation folder you want to be shown. This means we can repeat the same drawing several times in the animation. They are all linked to the same layer, so if I make an adjustment here, it is also changed over here. That means we don't have to make unnecessary duplicates. Coloring my animation in Clip Studio Paint is super fast and easy. The bucket tool has a lot of useful settings that speeds up the coloring process significantly. No need to worry about anti-aliasing artifacts or having to close all the gaps in the line work. You can just tap where you want your color applied. This artwork is now made up of a few layers. We have the painted background at the bottom, Above that sits the character split up into three animated layers. Outlines, colors and shading. On the very top we have the water, also in three animated layers. The blue transparent water, the foam sitting on the surface and finally the shading of the foam. The final animation landed on just over 80 frames which at 12 frames per second plays out at roughly 7 seconds of animation. My main tip for you if you're animating water is to first describe the overall motion without any details added. Only when that starts to look good you can begin adding details like the foam on the surface and the waves hitting any rocks as a secondary pass of animation. If you're halfway down the line of adding details and then suddenly wanting to change the pacing of the whole water motion, you might have a lot of reworking to do. So plan it out wisely and build it up step by step. Clip Studio Paint is a fantastic software that covers it all. You have incredible tools for creating paintings and illustrations, as well as the best animation timeline I've come across. I can't stress enough how much I enjoy working in this software. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, I highly recommend you check out Clip Studio Paint. You can download it and try it for yourself using their free trial. I hope you have enjoyed this video. You can check out my Patreon page for more in-depth tutorials, as well as join a very nice and talented community of animators and artists over there. Subscribe here on YouTube to help this channel grow, and I will see you next time. Bye.